Hey, welcome to flipping $400 into a Ferrari. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels and also welcome to a car dealer auction. You guys are lucky today and let me tell you why. You don't just get to listen to my bad jokes. You got three generations of car guys today. Myself, my father, and my grandfather all telling you guys bad jokes. Now, why are we at the auction today? because I have $7,000 to spend on a specific vehicle. What kind of specific vehicle? I have absolutely no idea what I'm gonna find here today. Like Forrest Gump's mother says, you never know what you're gonna get. We're at the auction with $7,000 to see what we can come up with. We got here early so we can shop around, see what's here, see what we can buy for $7,000. Why do I have $7,000? I sold an Acura TL for $7,000. So this is flipping $400 into a Ferrari. What does that mean? I started with just $400 a really long time ago. I don't need a new business, but this is how I started my business, with just $400. I bought cars, sold cars, bought cars, sold cars, fixed them and cleaned them in between time. I recently had $35,000, and I say recently, like within the past four months. I went to Virginia, and I bought a Bentley Continental GT. I paid about $28,000 after all expenses, shipping and repairs and everything. That leaves a difference of $7,000. I then bought an Acura TL and a Jeep Grand Cherokee, and I had a little bit of cash left over. Show us this TSX or TL or whatever we bought the other day. Three grand, I think. And I'm like, for a TL that looks this good, I raised my hand and bought it. The problem was the actual condition. I'll let you go through it because you've actually gone through this more than I have. So over here, as you folks can see, we have a crate for a seat. We got a cracked tail light. Just needs some bumper work down here. This is kind of a project I bought for us. This 06 Jeep Grand Cherokee, 177,000 miles. There's a ton of miles. Lift kit. I paid like not a lot of money for this. this. My numbers are all misconstrued and all out of context now. I haven't sat down to actually figure out where I'm at. I can tell you. I have a Bentley, a Jeep Grand Cherokee, and I sold an Acura TL for $7,000 and a little bit of cash in between. I'm gonna go through the numbers in a whole other video. For now, let's just say I have $7,000 and that's what we're at the auction for, looking for cars for $7,000 today. And you guys are gonna join us to see what we can come up with. He's in the market for a truck. I'm always in the market for something fun as well. So it's not just what can we buy for $7,000, it's what are we gonna drive home today? I have no idea and that's the fun part of today's video. Let's go searching for cars. We're at the auction. Prices are crazy, but they're starting to come down, but dealers still want all the money for them, thinking their cars are worth too much. I honestly think we're in some type of a correctional market. Dad, where are you? Right here. What did you say about car markets right now? Crazy, and, out of control. And the entire market is what? Inflated? Yeah. And he also told me that he thinks things are starting to come down. Now, oh, I'm yeah. always feeling like Chicken Little, the sky is falling. I've been saying that for three years. I actually feel like that's really happening right now. It's just... Government, I'm not gonna get politics, but. Yeah, no, I think it's just, Things are wild. Not that far off. Everything's due for a correction. My stocks, I invested money in some stocks for the first time ever, and I'm way down, like 15% in a month. So that stinks. Now, trucks are big right now. I sell trucks all the time, and I do really, really well with them. This is an awesome truck. I sell a ton of these. The weird thing is, that wheel is different than that one. Why does this have 22 inch Cadillac Escalade wheels on the front and LTZ wheels in the rear? Where are those other tires? Does it have WeatherTex? Oh, nice. It has the rims in the back. I will be bidding on this today. We're gonna start it, we're gonna drive it, we're gonna check it out. An 11 Denali with 54,000 miles. Missing the trim panel, I think on both sides, which is pretty common. It's a sharp truck. So the 6.2 liter that comes in the Denali's is standard in this generation. The regular GMC Sierras and Silverados have a 5.3 liter, 6.2, 405 horsepower. But this is all wheel drive, right? There's no full wheel drive option? I don't see it, yeah, no. Yeah, these come in Very all wheel control. drive and you don't get a four x four manual, four x four with the uh, low option. Now, obviously this is gonna be way over $7,000 but I'm also shopping to film my car lot. We're always selling cars. We sold two yesterday. If you've been watching on my Corvette Z06 build, I think we sold the Corvette and it's getting picked up today. That Z06 that so many people said is junk and turned out to be amazing. I told you in that video, I can look past the ugly because I know what I want it to look like and what we're gonna do to those things. And that car came out amazing and I didn't want to sell it. So I gave it kind of like an FU number to see if it would sell. 
and I think it did. Let's go check out that Challenger SRT8. Right over here. They still make the SRT8? Yeah, they don't call it the SRT8 anymore, I don't think. They, this is a 392. Yeah, they have the scat pack, they have the wide body scat pack. And TA, it goes back and forth. Some people think it means Trans Am, some people think it means track attack. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's track attack or time attack. I don't really know. Do you guys know? Comment down below and tell me. Now, what's cool about this, I love matte black trunk, roof, and hood. Huge Brembo brake calipers with the SRT8 emblem. Has 20 inch rims. Oh, cloth interior? Yeah, I was just gonna say, I didn't want to the video, but it's got a basic interior. Very basic. That's why I don't think this was one of the optioned out cars. And did you know, I don't know. Oh yeah, look at I was just gonna say, do you know these yellow trims are actually just protective coverings to cover the front molding? I didn't know that. And I was gonna tell you that, but I wasn't too sure until I read this, to be removed by dealer. So this thing is actually supposed to come off when you sell the car. So every time you see a Challenger like this, Somebody didn't take it off. I love the wide body fender flares. Yeah, me too. Of all the things that are super cool about this car, this is my favorite. This headlight right here is hollow. It's Ram air induction. So the air will go in here and it actually lights up, not just on the ring. It lights up on the inside and says TA. Yeah. It's an automatic. Oh. So cool on the outside, yet so basic on the inside. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the interior, to tell you the truth. Usually the SRT8s are upgraded. Oh yeah, look at that's what I was talking about right there. Yeah, that's a cool shot. Now this car's been here for like, I think this is the third week it's been here. It's a 2021, 1700 miles. So obviously they want retail money for it. We were walking through the auction, Papa and I, and a guy said to me, he goes, hey, did you buy that blue Corvette convertible last week? I said, no, nah, I'm gonna hold off on it. He goes, oh, get Craig to buy it for you. He bought Papa Al of Thunderbird. <laughs> so easy to say. And now I owe you. Speaking of that, yeah. perfect segue. We're not here to just go to the auction today. We have something way cooler that's happening later today. Do you want to tell him? I can if you want. Yeah, tell him. I, I didn't buy that convertible uh, Z06, but I did buy a 16 convertible vet uh, with 18,000 miles. And Craig and I, should I tell him what yeah. we ordered? Uh, tell him. Yeah. We ordered two brand new ones. I ordered a 22 coupe uh, with the target top and Craig ordered the Z06. So for Christmas, Craig got me a race car experience out in Las Vegas, Nevada, <laughs> driving brand new Corvette. So today, after the auction, we are going to Logan Airport in Boston, flying out to Nevada, yeah. where we get to go to Ron Fellows Raceway. We stay on track, like they have condos for us, they feed us, and we have an in-class experience and an on-course experience in the new C8. And this isn't like one of those like, pay to drive a supercar. This is a real class where we learn how to drive race cars. Thanks to Ron so, Fellows and GM, because GM helped sponsor our trip. Fast forward, you're getting a sneak preview right now. This is Ron Fellows in Nevada. This is their driving school. My father and I are here. We're learning how to race cars. That's gonna be upcoming videos. As we slow the car down for turn one, we'll go down the fourth gear, start bleeding those brakes off videos that I left people feeling unfulfilled. Number one, did you buy the Blue Z06? No, you didn't. No, I didn't. You bought something else. I did. I bought a 2016 convertible Z51. It's a nice car and I got a great deal. So it was, the Blue Z06 was my dream car, but the silver Z51 I bought, the convertible, I got a great deal and it has every option and I can't help it. I'm more about the deal than the dream car. It's about I the love deal getting you a got. deal. Yeah, it's yeah. about the deal you got. You like your car more so, when you get a deal on it. Right. And you got an order on a new yeah. Corvette and I got an order on a new Z06. One day they'll show up. We'll be nice when. when they come in. So hopefully you guys get some closure to questions from previous videos. Let's get back to the auction. It'll be fun. Can I add one quick comment? Please do. I want to have you guys make a comment. Who do you think is going to get a better track time? Old or young? Me or Craig? <laughs> so those are the videos coming up. Our video learning how to race Corvettes out in Las Vegas is going to be kind of interesting because I think we should maybe do put some stakes on it. See who can drive better. I well, we think could do I that. Can, but... It could be for a steak. Yeah. Steak dinner. Oh, there we go. And between three generations, we're our family's known for our giant, big, huge egos. 
I would say competition more than ego. If <laughs> competition. Someday, right. maybe you can ask Craig whose tattoo is bigger, mine or his. <laughs> Let's look for some cars. I've always liked these CTS4s, and I've had two CTS-Vs like this. I'm a little thing here and there. All right, I'm gonna explain what you're doing right now, okay? On every car that we buy at the auction that we're interested in has a decal, year, mileage, VIN, and a scanner. I have this product I use all the time called Laser Appraiser. So if I click here, I click on VIN Scanner. This is my app called Laser Appraiser. All I do is scan the barcode, and this is how dealers price their cars. 2011 Cadillac CTS 3.6 all-wheel drive the mileage shows up it tells me what it's worth on retail so if I look at like just a base retail is about 12.5 based on the mileage and they give it a condition report at the auction Mannheim is one of the biggest auctions in the country the Mannheim market report is basically an average of what these cars have sold for at auction so an MMR Mannheim market report is about 6650 so I should pay about 6650 for this car that's what dealers are paying for these right now now I like to look you can see they have the auto auctions app they have black book they have JD power and Kelly blue book I like to look at the JD power low Almost nothing sells for JD Power Low, but 6100 is the JD Power Low, high is 10.3. I can even scroll down to Carfax and AutoCheck. If you have accounts with either of these, you can link them to your laser appraiser and then figure out what the Carfax or the AutoCheck history reports are just based off that scan right there. So I can hit the Ruchiri report and find out this car has three owners, no accidents, and I can get a full report all on one app. The other cool thing is it saves my history. So if I looked at like, Today I looked at a Honda Element, so I can check back to the Honda Element I looked at. So if you've been watching me for years, I write down the year, make, model, mileage, lane, lot, run, all that stuff on a piece of paper. That's old fashioned. Now all that stuff is saved into my laser appraiser app, and I can look at every car I looked at today right in this app. It's really, really cool, so no need for pen and paper anymore. Laser appraiser has some type of special going on, and if you mention my name and a code, I have it in the description down below, you'll get some type of discount. So make sure to check out laser appraiser with the link in the description down below. Three owners, no accidents according to the auto check. Um, low was 6100, high was 8250, but I'm wondering if it would have sold for more than that in this market. This car has been here a couple weeks too though, and I'm really not quite cool. sure why. That's from people going from gas brake, gas brake, gas brake. So even though it only has 93,000 mm -hmm. miles, that looks like it's kind of hard driven miles. Oh yeah. Ah, bummer. So these have just a knob to turn because it's keyless. So you just turn the knob and it's Oh, snapped and broken. What a bummer. I can't even turn it. Ugh. And what stinks is buying cars like this at auction, I would never have known that had I not looked right. at it and, and you mentioned it. Not I'm going to let you guys in on a little trick I do. All right. TikTok and Instagram, even YouTube. All you have to do is make one small mistake and the geniuses on the internet love to tell you how wrong you the are. comments are unbelievable. So I did a video on how long my tire is in my Corvette Z06. And I said, look at how long this tire is. And it was like 13 or 14 inches wide. Probably 480 people oh, had to tell me that it's wide and not long. And some of them were rude. And they were mean. Yeah. But because of that, the algorithm picks up on the comments, positive and negative, and they start promoting it more. That video has like 480,000 views now because people hate it so much. Now I did it again with the Z06 where I mirror imaged myself doing donuts. and I posted it in the Corvette forum. Now the Corvette community on Facebook, they're mean old people. <laughs> it's usually old guys who think they're happy. Yeah. Like, look how happy he is. <laughs> they, they, they are they know mean everything. people and they all know everything and can't wait to tell you about it. So I mirrored the Z06 and it has Grand Sport fenders on it because the Z06 fenders are carbon fiber and they're $1,500 each. And mine has a reconstructed title. I mirrored it, did donuts and said, check out this right hand drive Corvette doing donuts. Well, the Corvette community went wild, hating on me because number one, that isn't a Z06, that is a Grand Sport. And number two, it's a mirrored video. Like they're just a bunch yeah. of geniuses. Yeah. So that algorithm picks up and then the video gets boosted more and more. So little mistakes are sometimes intentional. I'm not a complete moron. Oh. I love these expeditions. Yeah. So I buy what I know. I have three kids, I have a dog, we travel a lot, I tow a lot, some minivans and big, SUVs 
I really know. The problem with these expeditions, like you can see how clean this thing is, so nice. Watch these rocker panels, if they even exist. None existent all the way down the side. They are always completely rotted. You should get this for Tammy. <laughs> she would appreciate this. The toaster. It's humbling. I do really well with ridge lines. Even this one with 201,000 miles, if it's clean like rust wise, I do really well with them. Now, inspection expired two months ago, but they're super reliable. Oh, look at that armrest. That is ugly. But this car is probably in my $7,000 budget. Someone's gonna love it and it's gonna get good money for it. And it's kind of a fun project to clean. Those carpets are disgusting. If you saw my Acura video, the carpets were disgusting. And I have some new tools I'd love to try out cleaning this thing. So this might in fact be our $7,000 car for the day. That push bar didn't do too much. Wow. So this thing I was actually the high bidder on last week. I want to make a convertible project on one of these, like cut the roof off completely, yeah. jack it up just like that. It would have been a great donor car for this. And then just make it like a summer car. Cut it from here all the way across because it has the door attached to the bottom half. Most like Tahoe's and everything are up here. And then if you cut that, you have no tailgate. So a Jeep Liberty would be perfect. Okay, there's a car right around the corner right here that I really want you to see. And I'm, I wanna be on it. I want this car. I wanna see if you can figure out what it is and you guys too. I've never seen one here. And I'll tell you, I don't wanna say anymore. Come check out this car. Tell me when you spot it. You know? Is it this one right here? Yeah. yeah. Looks like a Chevy Cruze from here, right? Nothing big, no big deal. It's a Mercury. What Do you it? know what that emblem is? Da, do, do, oh, do, do, do. Yeah. Well, my first thought was a Mercury, but I don't, I do not know. It is not a Mercury. Australia is where these cars are from. Holden is the manufacturer. So I think if look you look in the, in the door, it should say like Holden right there. So you'll see GM and the Holden emblem. Holden made the GTO in like 2000, in the early 2000s. It yep. was called the Holden Monaro. And GM took that car and made it the GTO. This is a Chevy SS, 6.2 liter, six speed, Brembo brakes, big wheels, heavy suspension. Suede, we have the Alcantara interior, suede, six speed transmission with back seats. This car has 415 horsepower, rear wheel drive sedan. It's essentially like a CTSV, like a naturally aspirated CTSV. Yeah. Someone converted the Chevy SS into the Monaro version with the center caps, with the emblem on the front, with the rear. This car is 415 horsepower. It's crazy. Start it up and listen to it. It must handle well. What? So is this this is a real one, not a conversion? I think this is a conversion because that airbag has a Chevy emblem, and the the Holdens don't have the SS on the seats. This car's worth like fifty grand. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> Alcantara dash with leather and red stitching. And how cool is it to have a sedan a with four hundred horsepower and a six-speed transmission? Yeah. It is awesome. a cool little car. I don't need this car, but I want this car. The problem is I use this excuse all the time. I have three kids, so I'm constantly looking for something fun that I can put my kids in and my family as well. And this would do it. My Corvette doesn't do it. Look at that. Now, why aren't these supercharged? I wonder. The CTSV is supercharged. Why wouldn't they supercharge the Chevy SS? I want to be the high bidder on this. I don't need this car though. There is no reason I should have this car and it's probably gonna be like 50 grand. I think the, so I scanned the VIN with my laser appraiser app. It came up at like $44,000 for a sedan, which is crazy. All right, it's to auction time. Let's go in, see what we come up with. Ah, surprise, surprise, a BMW that smokes. Whoa, I wouldn't mind having that, a 2019 X6M. So nice. Oh, here's that 2019 track attack, and it didn't sell for 47,000. That was nice, 2021. Oh my goodness, so tempting. A 392 SRT Durango. Wow, what a family car. The only one I'd want more than that 
is a Hellcat minivan, the Chrysler Pacifica minivan Hellcat. I want one of those for a family car. That SRT is still bidding at $60,000. Can you imagine $60,000 for a Durango? I might've got my car and there she is over there. A 2011 Honda Ridgeline with 200,000 miles. I paid $6,200 for it, but I am the high bidder on an if, meaning the seller has to accept the price because it's below their reserve, below what they want to sell it for. 200,000 miles, that's a Honda Ridgeline. How, how wrong can you go with those things? EXL leather, that would be a really, really good Ferrari flip vehicle. It should sell quickly. 08 Tundra, 200,000 miles. That car will sell. I get 10,000 for those all the time. Now, if you look at the app, like I said, I scan it, comes up with the VIN. It pulls up the mileage automatically because the auction logged it in. Retail on that is 17,000. Let's just say it was an SR5, I forget. 16.3. Mannheim MMR, which is the most accurate of what dealers should be paying, is 8,500. I paid six grand. Retail is 13 with that mileage. And there we say it tells me it's a 4.7 liter SR5. This is what I base my cars on, and I never ever get them this cheap. 7,300 is JD Power Low. This is always the lowest number I can find when I'm looking. I paid six, 7,300 is the low number on JD Power. And then I can scan down to my auto check that shows three owners and no accidents. So I pretty much stole that truck. Oh man, a power stroke excursion. If this doesn't scream family car, nothing does. These things are worth so much money now. Nine passenger, actually I think that has captain shares in the front. So eight passenger. Work truck family vehicle. I love that it has the barn doors. Now that's a 6.0, which isn't so, it's such a reliable engine. They used to come with a 7.3, so if you get like an earlier generation, they come with a 7.3 Power Stroke, that is the engine to have. My dad's having a good time. He's just been scanning cars left and right. Scan, scan, scan. What's every car worth? This would be a great one. I do so well with these Honda Elements, real time, four wheel drive. They're so reliable and not that much money. Here's the car of the day. I'm sure you'll be walking home with this. That's the one I like. Prices are crazy here today. I was at 3,500 in that BMW, which I thought was high. It's going for almost seven grand now. Auction's over. I have, I think, like six ifs, and I don't think I bought a single car. The prices are starting to come down, but the dealers still want all the money. So they're not selling, they're getting ifs. So like the high bidder didn't meet what the seller wants to sell it for. So I think I have six of them. So now I'm gonna go check on them, see how many the seller declined, see how many their counter is, like how many, like I bid this, they wanna sell it for this, they give me a counter offer. Now's that time at the end of the day. Let's see if I bought anything at all. A few minutes later. So what did you end up with today? I'll tell you, I did end up getting a Ferrari flip car for under $7,000. I got an 08 Toyota Tundra that we didn't even look at out in the lot. It just showed, ran through. I've always gotten 10 grand plus for like that newer body style Tundra. Yeah. I paid $6,280 for it. So I'm under budget, which leaves me money for repairs. I also got a vehicle that I haven't even shown at all in this video. I got a Jeep Wrangler, but there's a story behind it, which is kind of funny. Nice. I'll show that to you in a minute. Is it the red one? No. And the best news probably is that I didn't get that Holden. They didn't even counter offer. So I was at 38.5. I, I don't need that car. You don't car. need that car. So that's probably a blessing for me. Once the novelty wore off that one, you'd be done with it. Right. And then I got three other ifs. Just I was talking to one of the sellers, the new car stores, and he said he noticed prices are coming down the past two weeks. That's what so I thought. Yeah. Exactly what I said. I've been getting ifs because I'm the highest bidder, which is below what the sellers want. He's been seeing that for the past two weeks and he's been making counter offers and not selling vehicles. We just had that conversation, you and I and your mother and I, that I, I think things are coming down. So heads up, don't overpay for things right now because you don't know what's coming. That's too bad though, because I just bought a vet. <laughs> and I knew it too. All right, here's my other purchase for today. This is a 13 Jeep Wrangler with 148,000 miles. The kind of weird thing is, it says, Somebody scratched in the paint. He hits women, but it gets better or worse than that. Oh, I think these are factory. Oh, is this an Oscar Mike? Did I just buy an Oscar Mike? Don't hit women. Hmm, that lady was pissed. Don't mess with her. But it is an Oscar Mike. That's awesome. So this is cool. Oh. This will actually be my first Jeep Wrangler of 2022. 
Last year, I probably sold 25 Wranglers or more. This is my first one of the year because the prices have not come down. They usually come down in the fall and the winter, and they have not come down at all. You know the game. Will it start? Well, the key won't even come out. Oh, there we go. Will it start? Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Click, 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 click. That stinks. <sighs> that stinks. Let's try one more time. Ready? I feel good about you. Let's go. Ugh. If you're doing this stuff as a profession or even as a hobby, always get yourself a jump pack. I even have a backup jump pack because one is always dead. You will always be jump starting cars. Get yourself a lithium ion jump pack. I'm not gonna advocate for anybody, but I have a link in my like description down below from an Amazon, which is where I get them from. It's worth having and they're not that expensive either. Completely off topic. I love and hate these Suburbans. I just bought my wife one. They are probably one of the worst vehicles ever built in history. They have bad transmissions. They have uh, DOD, like if you just displace them on demand, AFM, active fuel management issues. So their lifters wear out and they wear out the cam. These things are awesome. And they were super, super expensive. And the fit and finish is decent, but the quality of the build is horrendous. Like I say fit and finish, but these things pop out because they're just like plastic welded in the leather cracks on them they're pretty cheaply made for an eighty thousand dollar vehicle 08 to 13 awesome 14 and up i own one it shakes and vibrates when you're driving and that's a good one they are just awful vehicles they shouldn't be worth what they're worth which is too much money right now Little ticky ticky lifters in the Chrysler 3.6. Now here's the problem with this job. I'm learning to hate every vehicle because every vehicle has their own problems. The Chrysler 3.6, ticky ticky from their lifters. The Suburbans, the GM V8s, awful lifter problems. Nissan, transmission problems. GM trucks, transmission problems. Chevy cars, transmission problems. Ford cars, transmission problems. Like. What can you buy? The only things you can really buy, and I hate to say this, Honda and Toyota. There's like nothing else that you can buy that's reliable. Everything has issues. And you start, like as a dealer, you start to go through cars and say, oh, I can't buy that one. That has problems. These Volvos I can't buy, they have transmission problems. Those Jaguar X-Types were built on a Taurus platform. Those have transmission problems. Chevy Malibus, rot. Jeep Grand Cherokee, lifter issues. Chevy Silverado, transmission issues and rust issues. Everything, like you just start to learn what has problems, which is everything. And ironically, those little Miatas are one of the best cars ever built. Look at how clean this frame is though. Oh, it's so nice. He hits women. Well, we know why he sold his Jeep. Yeah. <laughs> Jerk. I want to look at this Tundra because I didn't see this out in the uh, dealer parking lot. The body looks good. That's, I bought it off the exterior. I do well with these. Now I actually have a video on why I'll never buy a Toyota Tundra. That's previous generation. They're just too old, they're too rusty. I didn't like that the starter's under the intake plenum. These things, even with 214,000 miles, oh, I just did this. I actually just said this. Every car, you know how like in this job, every car has issues, so you stop buying cars because right. everything has an issue? These are pretty solid vehicles, even with 214,000 miles. We have a bald tire here. Exactly we have right. a dented quarter panel. I'll get a new bumper for it. Both sides. Both sides? Oh, the bed's dented on both sides? Mm, that's not awful. Let's go to the inside. Animals. Animals. He had a dog. Oh, and it smelled like it. Pet people are worse than smokers sometimes. Look at the seat. Wet dog. Dang, this is not going to be easy. The next video is obviously going to be how to remove pet fur from a vehicle. And look at this was once carpet. Now it's completely flat. This thing is gross. Well, I was looking for a project for our next video. I found it. I have a feeling you can make this nice though. 6280 is yep. what I paid for this car. Retail is almost 14 grand, even with 200,000 miles. The body's pretty straight, other than those couple little dents. And I think yeah, it's, it's only one owner. 
Next video, we're gonna do an inspection on this. We'll do the repairs, we'll do the tires. I'm gonna try to bring this thing back to life and see what we can get for it. Until then, we are off to fabulous Las Vegas to learn how to race race cars. I bet I and win. And prove that I'm faster than my father. I doubt it. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe down below. And if you give me a thumbs up, it's a personal favor to me because it helps boost the algorithms. If you haven't subscribed yet, come on guys, hit the subscribe button. And the bell gives you notifications every time I make a new video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later. Adios. Hey everyone, thanks a lot for watching. If you click that circle right in the center, you can subscribe to our channel. And to the left and to the right in those boxes are two videos best recommended for you. Thanks again and have a great day.